dragons still fly in Britain, small but every bit as fearsome as the creatures of myth and fable. Dragonflies, and their slender cousins, the damselflies, are a modern counterpart of the ancient dragon, diminutive but no less rapacious. Richly emblazoned with heraldic colours, they come in many forms. But these dragons are no fire breathers. Ephemeral creatures of high summer, they're on the wing for only a few weeks in our cool northern climate, dependent on the sun's heat to warm their bodies. The two kinds can be told apart by the way they hold their wings at rest. Back along the body in damselflies, out to the side in dragonflies. Fossil imprints of wings like these date back 300 million years. Dragonflies were perhaps the first of all insects to fly. Both damsels and dragons have huge, multifaceted eyes. They hunt their prey by sight. They breathe through thin tubes or trachea, ingrowths from the hard outer skin that branch throughout their bodies. This in part limits the size they can attain. Most modern forms only 2 to 10 centimeters long. Their legs are fringed with fine hairs or bristles. In flight, the legs are held pointing forwards and form a net with which they scoop their prey from the air. Small gnats and midges are their staple diet, but they will take larger flies as well, either eating them on the wing or carrying them back to a perch to devour them. The more robust dragonflies have even been seen to take small frogs. The skill of dragonflies in the air is breathtaking. They can hover, dart forwards or sideways, or even fly backwards, often at a speed that is almost too fast for the eye to follow. They are unusual among insects in the way their wings are powered. In most insects, the wings are attached rigidly to the body, and they fly by flexing the thorax. But in dragonflies, the muscles are linked directly to the wings, as they are in birds or bats. The front and hind wings can even beat separately. Here, the movement has been slowed down 60 times. Once they're sexually mature, male dragonflies are territorial. For at least part of the day, they defend a particular stretch of pond or river, attacking and chasing any other male that flies near. Holding a territory gives the owner a better chance of mating with any female that comes to his patch of water to lay her eggs. In some kinds, this is a common hawker, the territory can cover tens of meters of water and it's patrolled on the wing.
such constant patrolling burns up a lot of energy. Other species have smaller territories, but defend them from a perch. This uses less energy and so perhaps allows the male to hold the territory for longer. Most damselflies are perchers rather than patrollers. A male banded demoiselle and the female without the dark bands on the wings. Male banded demoiselles set up territories around patches of aquatic plants. The defended area can be as little as one or two meters across. The first reaction to another male may be just an aggressive flick of the wings. If this fails to drive the intruder away, an aerial battle may develop. The female is treated quite differently. The male courts her by repeatedly settling on the water and floating downstream. Few damselflies have such elaborate courtship. In most, this is the common emerald, mating has little preliminary. This female is unreceptive, but with another, the male has more success. He first seizes the female behind the neck with a pair of claspers at the end of his tail. What then follows is unique in the insect world. Most insects mate tail to tail, but male dragonflies and damselflies have a second set of sex organs underneath their bodies. The male transfers sperm from his tail to this secondary organ. The female bends her tail round to make contact with it, and the pair assume a bizarre and characteristic wheel position. The bright colours and distinctive patterns of the different species help individuals to recognise their own kind and reduce attempts to couple with inappropriate mates. Mating can last for several minutes, and during this time, the male may remove any rival's sperm before inserting his own. Banded demoiselles separate after mating, but the male still stays near the female and guards her from interference while she's laying her eggs, flicking his wings to drive off other males. In the large red damselfly, the male remains attached to the female during egg laying, so preventing a rival stealing his mate. And maybe the extra pair of wings makes it easier for her to rise from the water during this risky operation. Like most damselflies, she lays her eggs actually inside the tissues of aquatic plants. Many dragonflies, in contrast, scatter them freely into the water. Every time the female's tail touches the surface, as seen here from underwater, eggs are washed off and sink to the bottom. Here, an egg is just leaving the female's body. Although both members of the pair beat their wings during this tandem egg-laying, it's the male that makes the critical movements, swinging the female down so her tail touches the water.
Not all dragonflies lay in tandem. This is a female brown hawker. Surely the most startling way of laying is that practiced by damselflies like the common emerald. Just watch this. go right down underwater, as much as a foot beneath the surface, and they stay there for as long as 15 minutes. A silvery film of air clings to their bodies and allows them to breathe. The female slices into the reed stem with her sawtoothed ovipositor and lays her eggs deep into the plant's tissues. They will remain there until the following spring. Laying eggs can be a risky business. Some adults fall prey to fish or frogs, and there are perils at the water margin too. The sticky leaves of the insect-eating sundew. Many a damsel ends her life in their tacky embrace, and even a robust dragon can become ensnared. Yet others are trapped in cobwebs at the water's edge. As evening falls, dragonflies go to roost. They spend the night well away from water, settling perhaps on the warm western side of a sheltered bush to bask in the last rays of the sun. By daybreak, the heat of the day before has drained from the dragonfly's slender body. It's too cold to fly. It starts to warm up by vigorously whirring its wings. Then it walks, or takes a short flight, to another perch where it can absorb the heat of the morning sun. Some dragonflies regulate their body temperature by perching at different heights depending on the weather. In this way, they vary the amount of radiant heat they receive from the ground or water below. When it's cloudy, they perch low down to keep warm. But on a sunny day, the same dragonfly perches right at the top of the same twig. It's just as important not to be too hot as too cold. Some kinds keep cool in hot weather by perching with their tail raised and pointing at the sun. 
In this way, they present the least surface area to be warmed. As summer fades, fewer days are warm enough for these cold-blooded dragons to fly. And with the first frosts of autumn, they die. As spring warms the water, the emerald eggs that have been concealed in the now withered reed stems since the previous summer begin to hatch. What emerges isn't the larva proper, but a worm-like prolarva. But this stage lasts only a few seconds. Its skin splits and the leggy nymph struggles free. The newly hatched nymph is only a few millimeters long, but its fragile appearance is deceptive. It's a highly efficient predator. Those feathery projections on its tail are gills. All damselfly nymphs have them. Nymphs come in many forms, each adapted to the needs of its particular habitat. This dragonfly nymph from still water lurks on the bottom. Its body is hairy to trap particles of mud and help hide it. Other kinds are vigorous hunters. The larval stage lasts for one to three years or more, depending on species. Then, triggered perhaps by changes in day length or temperature, the nymph's behavior changes. Some days before it's due to hatch, it moves to shallow water near the bank. It stops feeding. The muscles of its mouth parts dissolve. Other and greater changes proceed within the nymph's shell. Then, under cover of darkness, it crawls up out of the water. That night, or very early in the morning, the final stages of its life history unfold. In a remarkable transformation, a new insect bursts from the drab larval skin. This is perhaps the most dangerous time in the dragonfly's life. 
For two hours or more, the emerging adult will be soft, immobile, and defenseless. Ready prey to any early bird that finds it with the dawn. With its tail still held by the empty larval case, it hangs for an hour upside down. Now the final acts of the transformation begin. Rhythmic movements pump fluid into the veins of the wings. Finally, the body hardens and the wings dry. Another dragon begins its few brief weeks in the air. Thank mm -hmm. you. 